What do be crew? It's your boy Savon Thomas, and we are back with another episode, another segment of Coffee with Friends. I'm joined with my friends. We are reviewing season one of Game of Thrones. This is our second recurring podcast series, Gilmore Girls and Game of Thrones. We're doing reviews of both of them. This time we're joined by a different crew for Game of Thrones. Um, I'll let these guys and gal introduce themselves real quick. Who wants to go first? Ladies first. Uh, I was going to say, I'll go ahead anyways. Um, so I'm Tierra Bar. Uh, I'm only, you know, 23. Just good friends with Savon. Love Game of Thrones. Uh, you know, I like painting. I like um, art. I like hiking. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm Brandon White. I'm a good friend of Savon's and business partner. I've mean, been knowing my man for a while now. Um, growing together. Excited to uh, be a part of his Coffee with Friends podcast. I've been trying to get him to get me on forever. So glad to be here. I'm a father of one. Got a baby girl, uh, not a baby, but nine years old. Um, excited to be a father. I have a background in the arts. So I do theater, uh, open my poetry, things of that nature. Excited and always passionate about performing. And I work in youth development as well. So that's who I am. Born and raised in Dallas, Texas. Go Cowboys. I'm always shouting out, even though it ain't a great team right now this year. Nice. I just want to I just want to preference something that you said there when you say you've known me. You said going together. I just want for anybody else out there, we don't go together. <laughs> I am a straight man. I love women. You know, Did I say Brendan White, White is Maybe. one of my great friends. Oh, no. I don't think I said going together. I might have just you said going my together. Parents. And I was like, what the um, heck does that mean? I, I, don't... <laughs> I, I didn't catch that, Savon. <laughs> Neither did I. I did. <laughs> <And it doesn't... laughs> I'm Manuel Perez, per, um, good friend of Savon's. Uh, I like anime. Um, born and raised in Dallas, Texas, but I'm an Eagles fan, so fly, Eagles, fly. And yeah. Nice. This man's about to say personal sponsor. That's hilarious. That was- <laughs> you know, you know why he did that. You know why he threw out his his Eagles fan. He's an Eagles fan. You know why he did that. Yeah, of what course. He brought up the Cowboys, so I got to bring up the Eagles. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, hey, the Eagles have gone to the Super Bowl uh, more and won the Super Bowl more recently than the Cowboys have. So, yeah. Okay. I'm not a Cowboys See, fan. You know, I live right now. But I mean, if it's talking about trending franchises, but honestly, and I and this is not a sports uh podcast, but I do love sports. I think this is a Cowboys year. Like, honestly. Honestly. Weirdly enough, even though the running back situation might not be that good, I think of, of all the years where this could be it, I think this is it. That's neither here nor there. Let's go. We're gonna see what the I might, season I might even put a bet in to to the I might have already put a bet in. For the Cowboys. Oh. Wow. Mm. Well, again, this is a review of the show Game of Thrones. Uh, I have some people on here that have seen Game of Thrones. I, for myself, I've watched it once before. I know there's one person that has not seen Game of Thrones. So this is the first time they're watching it through. Um, so I, I, I'm interested to know, like, how many times have you guys watched Game of Thrones? Uh, and, like, why did you start, like, watching the show in the first place? I started watching it. Well, I've, this is my third time watching it, first of all. Um, and I watched it for the first time in high school when it came out. And then I watched it again during COVID because what else were we doing? Um, right. And I started watching it because, I don't know, you're like, you know, I'm a girl. So it's like, oh, everything has to be so cute and so proper. You got to talk a certain way. But like, I have an aggressive side too. So like seeing that in the show is like a way to get it out. And there was plenty of it <laughs> to get out in the show. And then I got hooked on the storylines. And it's just it was just so good how it was woven together. So, yeah. Well, this is my first time watching it. And I was, I was shook. It was great. You know, I like medieval time type of um, settings and things of that nature with, with movies and film, film and television. And so I was... I was definitely uh, engaged. And then I'm like, yo, I, I was on a ride. So I was like, how how did I not watch this show before? But That's, you know, I know I'm giving a question to you, Brandon. Like, why, why haven't you watched it? Like, what made you wait so long? Well, I didn't have HBO when it was popular. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I didn't have HBO when it was popular. I remember seeing, like, 
when I was at maybe a friend's house, like clip snippets up an ep episode or anything, but you know, I wasn't there long enough to really get into it. You know, I had to keep it moving. So I just never had the access to it readily. Yeah, that was, that was the same for me. Like I, my dad and my sister absolutely loved this show. Like they've always watched it. They talked about it. I remember people when I was in, I don't know if it was high school or college talking about the whole like Starbucks cup situation which uh, Brendan, you'll learn more about later in other seasons. But like the last season, there was like a Starbucks cup um, that they didn't take out. And that was like a huge ordeal. People were talking. No, it was, it was, I was in high school. I was, that was 2016. I was working <laughs> at a job and they're talking about it. Um, so, so yeah, so I've, I've, I've heard about the show. My sister and dad talked about it all the time, but for me, it was similar to Tierra pandemic. I was like, I need a show to watch. And uh, this popped up as like a, one of the greatest shows ever. So I was like, let me actually watch this show. I, I do love period pieces as well, similar to Brandon. So I gave it a shot and I knew I'd probably like it. I, I didn't know how much I like it. I didn't know I like it this much. Um, but I, I knew I'd like it. So it's been it's been good watching it for a second time. Yeah, uh, for me, I started watching it probably when it first came out, but then uh, I lost access to HBO. So I stopped watching it. Then I started watching other stuff. And then uh um, a couple of years ago, I think a year before you before so probably 2019, um, I started re-watching it because I like B White, I like that medieval setting. So I was looking for something to watch and I was like, well, this has what I'm looking for. Let me start watching again. And just the concept of the game of the game that they're playing for the throne caught my curiosity. And mm -hmm. then um, the danger that they were facing, like everyone was facing some certain danger, and I'm like, how are they gonna make it out of it? Um, so that kept my attention. Then, um, just like the story of it, it was, it was great. Um, finished it, um, probably a couple months after the final season came out, but yeah, it was really good. I still go back and rewatch some of the battles, like the, uh, battle of the bastards. Um, I can't remember all of them, but yeah, I still go back and watch some of the battles. They're great. It's fun to watch. Yeah. Don't ruin it for Brandon yet. So Brandon's the newest. Oh, yeah. newest don't, don't talk about anything right. beyond the first season. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so this episode we're focusing on the season one, but you've seen season two as well. So yeah. uh, that, that is fair game to talk about. On season one on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so let's let's get into episode one. So episode one it sets the stage, obviously. Um, and really this entire season sets the stage of what we're gonna see throughout the entire show of like different different arcs and like the spider web of characters. But episode one, I thought for me, I don't know how you, how did you guys feel about the intro? Like for some, like I understand the White Walkers and like their their part in the show, but I feel like that was such a weird way to start a show if you'd never even heard of the show before. Like mm -hmm. it did it did transition from White Walkers to the the guy to Winterfell, so it made sense in the transition. But like mm -hmm. I feel like the just opening with the White Walkers, I was like. What is that? Why is that important? I thought this was about, you know, period. It was a period piece, not about like some weird people in the woods. Mm. So I, I, think, I, I, I think personally for me, like having gone through the show, but just like is from a first perspective, I think that's a good way to like introduce the problem because I feel like that is a big, that is another big thing that's going to come up as well as well as the little ones that are already happening. Um, to set up other big ones but i feel like it it gives us a view of like hey this is really this is something that's going on to keep in mind while we're going through all these things so it's like oh we have all these things but what about those little ice things that we just saw in the beginning like what was that for and then i think it'll add to the like oh of when it comes yeah i don't know it just it just, it just felt weird like I, I feel like there was a better way to introduce that maybe it was like you could do it in the beginning of the show. I froze. No, I didn't. I'm still here. Okay, good. Uh, you, you could do it at the beginning of the show, but like, just do it like a little bit further down. Like, introduce me to the families first and then get to the guy running from oh, from the north to Winterfell or something like that. I don't know. That's why I felt like it would have been more linear because I'm like, okay, that what is that up there? Versus like, just start the show. I'm like, because I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And first thing I see is these these characters in the woods not still to this day i'm like why was that i understand why it's important but you know anyways that's my thought if anybody has anything on that I, well, so I mean, 
it was the reaction that they got from it because like the guys were running for a minute. I was like, okay, so they got a threat already starting off in the beginning. Oh, this is gonna be a good show, yeah. you know, because you know you already see an immediate threat there. Um, but then later on, you see him. Um, yeah, you know, just like Tierra said, it's what's coming later in the show. And throughout the first season, I'm like, all right, you brought up these White Walkers. Where are they at? You know, that's what I was looking for in the first season. But gotcha. I don't know. Gotcha. So, so I'll say, for me, at first, like, it was kind of like, okay, where, where are they going? Just like when with the opening scene, when, when you see the, uh, the men of the wall um, just coming out and then going across the, the, the landscape. And I'm like, okay, what's the point of this? And then when I see like all those bodies, I'm like, okay, cool, interesting. And then, but then I was able to tell like once he went back and told his two, his two homies or whatever, and then they go back and it's gone. I was like, well, what the heck is going on now? So I'll say, I thought in terms of like plot structure and setting things up, like it was a very different type of introduction that you're used to in in the the genre or just in the uh, playwriting, screenwriting, film, film and television writing, because like they put it right there on your face. They already give you the rising action, a little bit of it in the uh, introduction and foreshadowing. I mean, because now we know like okay, the men of the wall. We know why they're there. We know what their purpose is. We know what they're chasing, and it was, I liked it, actually. I, I was I appreciated it after, you know, it settled in. I was like, okay, this is cool. Because I knew yeah. I knew something was about to happen to one of them. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a there's a crap ton of foreshadowing. Sec, watching for the second time, I'm like, they do a lot of foreshadowing yeah. Yeah. in this first season. You may not catch some of it, Brandon, because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. But when like, I see it later, I'll be like, oh, that's why that Maybe, happened. maybe. But the thing is, like, some of the stuff that they talk about, I didn't catch. Like, I'll talk about one of the things that um, that uh, one of the girls said to, to what's her, Viserys. Uh, but she was, like, she was, like, in the tub with them, and she mentioned, like, a man with a thousand faces. And I was like, hey, so there's, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of stuff that, that, that goes on in the show that they hint at in the very first season that I was so, I, I love. But we'll talk about that. But I do want to talk about the introduction. Again, episode one does a great job of introducing all of the characters. It starts with the Stark family, right? So we're introduced to Eddard Stark, which is named Ned, which is kind of weird. His name shouldn't it just be Ed? Um, yeah, but it's Ned. Cool. It's yeah. kind of interesting. It's Eddard Stark, but his name Ned. Catelyn, Lady Catelyn, um, his sons and daughters, uh, Rob Stark, Bran, uh, Rickon, Sansa, and Arya. Um, and then you also have uh, Ned's bastard, Jon Snow, and then Theon Greyjoy, who was captured um, and is a kind of like a prisoner, but not really. Um, right. He's kind of like just he's just there, but he's like best friends with Rob. And I so think he's all a squire, squire, yeah, he? like it's kind of interesting. Like this, but the thing is, like their families still have beef, but they don't at the same time, you know. So it's a uh, Theon. Theon's an interesting character. For sure, and uh, they all have their their arcs. They're all interesting, but mm -hmm. was it out of those out of the Stark family? Was anybody that just like you, you guys like, you guys don't like? Anybody that you're like, why is this person even there? Because I have somebody, but I'm gonna <laughs> let you guys talk first. Well, for me, I really I felt this like from the beginning. I just really don't like Sansa. I just think she's just so so airhead so useless just oh okay i'm gonna do this okay i'm gonna do this but i will say i mean i will say aria is my favorite just because she's a little harder like from the beginning she's been wanting to fight she wants to shoot arrows with the boy she wants to sword fight and everything but like you know obviously that's not how the order goes in her kingdom and she's fighting so hard to do that yeah just like tara said um aria from the beginning um, her, I forgot the brother's name, but Arya was shot the bow behind him. And I was like, "Hey, man, she's Brand. gonna be." That was yeah, Bran. Yeah, shot the arrow behind him. I was like, "Man, she's gonna be. She, she's gonna be a fighter to, at, at towards the end of the series." Um, so that was my initial thought, and I was like, "She's gonna be a cool character if if she's allowed to fight." Um, yeah, like it was it was a great introduction. 
Um, yeah, just our. Daria made the most impact for me in the first episode in the in the first introduction because yeah. she's the younger sister and she's shot better than Brandon, who's probably been training every day. Yeah, Brandon Wilde's throwing his hands up, so I know he has a strong opinion here. Yeah, I have a very strong opinion. Um, and but my my chapter is pretty much the same as as uh, Tiara and Eman. So I cannot stand. I could not stand. Sansa and I'm you'll learn why when we talk about the other episode later where she but like she just <laughs> she's not even like she, she's a people pleaser and it has her own agenda I'm like come on you're not you're not the, the lack of loyalty to an extent mm -hmm. I mean we find out a little later but there is some loyalty um but I was like girl get yourself together um but Arya like she's She's a ride or die. She's a ride or die. And you could tell, like, when she came out and just stole that moment from Brandon, like, it was crazy. Like, you could already tell she's going, she's the one that doesn't give a rip about what other people think. She's going to be there. She's going to disrupt stuff. Like, she's going to be the one that's going to give you the business and the work. And so she's, she's a fun character because, you know, she's this little girl. And you can already see, like, she's, like, got these kind of tomboys, you know, um, traits just in her personality, you know, she don't want to be the little prissy princess. She wants to be the one that go go to war. You know what I mean? So yeah. I liked her. But I also, you know, my man Jon Snow, like I'm liking his story. Like I was like, okay, you the bastard son, but you know, you could see his loyalty. He he's he's a ride or die too. You know what I mean? Yeah, John is definitely an honorable man, just like freaking Ned. And yeah. he pisses, I... me, pisses me off. <laughs> um, what, we oh, I was gonna say, I feel like now rewatching it again, I feel like John Snow's a little indecided. He's like, I'm gonna go to the wall. I gotta fight with my brother. I don't wanna go to the wall. I gotta stay here. I don't know. I think he's he's very fickle in what he wants to do with his life. I, uh, why, why do you say that? I feel like, okay, it's not like so back to back. But like, if you like, kind of watch him, he's like, he's so set on things. But then he, like, the second he feels like he's wrong about the thing, he feels set on another thing that he thinks is the right thing. Okay, I can see that. Mm, I can see that. I can see that. Like he, I would say he does. He does uh, ride off emotions. Mm -hmm. You know. He does kind of make decisions off his emotions. You know yeah, what I mean? And that might be it as well. It's just his emotions. But yeah, no, I agree. Uh, John Stark, John Stark, <laughs> John Stark, <laughs> John Snow. Um, he he is fickle, and his his character arc is so interesting to me. We'll, we'll as we get through the seasons, we'll see kind of how how he transitions. But like in the in the season one, he's just like he's just the most basic character like he just like you said he goes to the wall he's like i'm going to the wall and then he like i don't know we'll get to the other episodes within season one but it's just like what are you doing bro and then he's like yeah. I'm gonna leave. you know like i i agree with you i like john snow brandon uh but for me of like the stark kids i there's 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 one i'll talk about one later as we get through this uh this review recap but there's one kid that i'm like what what part does he play uh, <laughs> And that's yep. Rickon. I'm like, bro, what is what is they don't even talk about him? Like they don't even talk about him like he's, he's like a character. Like things go down with Bran, obviously. And he even has a freaking arc. But it's like, what did Rickon do? Like what 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 purpose does he serve? So that's my only thing about the Stark family. I'm like, what Rickon just is just forgotten, the forgotten kid. To be honest, one, I've watched the season one twice, three times. I never noticed Rickon any of those three times. <laughs> like, I mean, real, real. Real. Well, I mean, there's, a, there's that one season. I think it's in. I mean, uh, not season. There's a one episode in. Um, uh, I think it's episode nine or ten where you know he has a little bit more, you know, presence. But so you only see him for a short time. You know? Yeah. So. so, but yeah. So that's that's the main Stark family. We also get introduced to two more families that are very important. Uh, we get introduced to the Lannister family. With Jamie, Ty Tyrion, I was about to say Tyron, Tyrion and Cersei. 
right? And then obviously, uh, I was gonna say Jamie's kids, they technically are, but Cersei's children, which are uh, Joffrey, Tommen, and the Lady Marcella. It is also the Targaryens with Viseria, Viserys and Daenerys over across the pond um, dealing with the Dothraki. But I will never, ever, 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 ever be Team Lannister. I don't know what it, like, I, I don't know what it is. Even though their sigil is a lion and I love lions, I, I'm always going to ride with the Starks. And if I, mm-hmm. maybe because I'm like always geared towards the main characters in the show, I think that's also why. And also, I hate Cersei. I've never hated a character more than I hate Cersei. God, bro. But, now, but the Lannisters, like, I, I just, I can't. Except for Tyrion. Tyrion's a good, like, Tyrion, there's no way to hate Tyrion. Like, you can never, you said you did this. Why? Why, Tyrion? Like, it's just such a sometimes with him. Like, like you said, you can't hate him, but you really want to. You're like, this you sucks. Like, like somebody kick him, but then you're like, oh, <laughs> he's helping out though. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, look, look. I told Savannah already. Like, he's he was my, one of my favorite characters in the whole show. Like, and as because he his witty, he knows how to use his strengths because he knows like I'm a half man, I'm an imp, whatever they want to call him. So I don't have all this, but he knows like I got my mind and I got the power of my words, and he knows how to use it. And mm-hmm. and you're right. There's part of me that hates him because I feel like, I mean, you know, you know, he's he's self aggrandizing so he's doing stuff for his own gain too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like we're gonna see that later. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know, but I feel like you know something's going. There's gonna be a moment where I'm gonna just be like, oh, I hate him now. I really hate him. You know what I'm saying? But um, right now, I love him. Like he's one of my favorite characters because he just you know, I like, <laughs> we'll get to it, but he ain't afraid to just l- let people know what it is, for real, for real, for real. Yes, similar to you guys, Tyrion's one of my favorite characters, um, but since nobody mentioned Targaryens, the series was, like, one of my least, like, one of my most hated characters introduced. Really? Oh, Yeah. Wait, that's the that's the brother, right? The brother. Yeah, I didn't care for him too much either. But it wasn't until you know, um, you know, he started tripping, you know, and acting like a little spoiled brat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I was like, okay, come on, homie. you look, you acting like, you know, can I can I be just can I say what I want to say? He acting like a bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was acting like a bitch. I'm like, man, come on, you know. He was acting so sour. I couldn't do it. I was like, bro, you're acting like a bitch right now. Your sister got more balls than you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I think he was a weenie from the beginning. Like, I, he was just like, oh, my kingdom, my father's crown, my yeah. dragons. Like, okay, yeah. but what are you doing? Nothing. You're beating your sister and selling her around. So I don't think you're going to be king anytime soon. I mean, but, you know, and it wasn't even that that bothered me, you know, him selling his sister or, you know, using then, her to to get to his kingdom, you know, because that's kind of common back in that day. You know, women were looked at as property, even by their, their own family, you know, and they were used for, for gain for certain things, right? They were all betrothed and then just in the episode where, you know, he wasn't getting what he wanted from the... Uh, what is it from uh, the Dragos? Playing the Rocky? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, he he got what he deserved. In my yeah, it, yeah. I wasn't saying it was because of that. That's why he was like that. I was saying it was like that's what he was only doing. Like there was no other moves he was making for for the crown. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Um, can you guys hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, so other key moments from the episode. I mean, you guys. Kind oh, of no, touched can, I'm sorry. Can I can I go back? Can I talk yeah. about the one that I I didn't mention that I also didn't like? That's the queen, queen Cersei. Be like, <laughs> like, I hated her. It's I hated the her. Beginning. I, I, I hate her right now. I hate her. But you know what? What that is though, 
Uh, so I'm gonna speak from the actor perspective now. I, I was gonna say when, that it's such a great you, when you have a a character that you hate, you love that actor. Like I love her as an actress, mm -hmm. just because her she plays her character so well. He, her and Jamie, like I hated both of them, and but they play their their character so well, and that's how you know like their their acting is on point because like I hate I hate their characters. Yeah. I was, I was gonna point that out too. The fact that I I have emotional angst towards Cersei and Joffrey um, is like it's it, it's just a testament to the acting and the writing, but to, yeah. to the acting of how like well they did. The fact that they can through a screen make me yeah. not like them. <laughs> it's like it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yes. I so say who? I said Joffrey too. Yeah, he like. You hate him, but that kid's he's acting his ass off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean the guy will forever be Joffrey. Like that's something about like Sans Sansa will forever be Sans, like all these different characters. They're always gonna be because it's such a huge show, they're mm -hmm. forever gonna be known as this, right? Like um yeah. Nikolov, I think it's like Nikolov Waldroff Costos is um Jamie's character, like the actual actor's name. And he yeah. was in he was in what movie did we go watch, E Man? That he was in uh, um, Spider Man. Spider Man, yeah, he was in Spider Man. Flash. The Flash. Oh yeah, yeah, The Flash. Sorry. Um, and he like he popped up, and everybody's like Jamie Lannister. <laughs> like <laughs> that's what that's what we know him as. So uh, to me, I'll I'll talk about before um, the king was on his way. That oh, I guess up. Um, Ned was talking to Caitlin. Catelyn. And he said, he's going to come tell me to go south to be handed to the king. And she's like, well, you can tell him no. It's like, you can't tell the king no. You know, he's a king for a reason. Like, regardless of what Ned and Catelyn want to do, Robert's still the king. He's going to, if he wants someone to be the hand, they're going to be the hand. So that just, that just bothered me. Like, it was, I don't know. That, well, yeah, it's a key moment. Definitely doing some foreshadowing. Um, but I think the king coming into Winterfell is like it's crazy. Like I didn't I didn't really know what was going on because it's the first time we introduced to the king, right? You know? And uh, so when they when they were coming, I was like, what's going on? I had no clue what was going on. So I was kind of confused. But it is, it is a key moment, you know what I mean, with him riding into Winterfell because of the hand being killed as we know I can't he didn't remember. know he been killed yet okay he didn't know yet okay so I was gonna say if I'm there then I'm like nah bro <laughs> you, can, you can keep that you can keep that yeah I don't want that job but you know he didn't know and you can you know Ned is loyal so Thanks. King wants that he knows like I can't tell him no and then when we see their history their friendship they fall together it's that sense of loyalty that that he's like yeah I'm gonna do it, but we find out his motivation is even stronger when he finds out that the hand of the king was yeah. has died. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing that happened that you guys can touch on, um, obviously talk about Viserys marrying his sister Khal Drogo in exchange for the promise of using his army. You just went sideways, Brennan. I'm not too sure why. Sorry, um, yeah, because I was trying to look at your your chat and it turned turned it sideways. But I'm back. Gotcha. Uh, but Bren finding out, Bren seeing Cersei and Jamie smashing in the tower, that was yeah. when I first saw that because I didn't because they talked about it like in the in the uh, castle about the, like their relationship, but I didn't I didn't catch that the first time I watched it. But when I yeah. like the first episode, when you see them in the tower, you're like, what in the what is going on here? Like incest, like incest. <laughs> It's not it's it is is again back in those times incest is not really that big of a deal like you know um Cersei talks about it later in the episode that the Targaryens used to wed to keep bloodlines pure just to say Targaryens yeah. Targaryens so I was so shocked I was like, what is going on now Jamie and and uh and Cersei are together like that was so such a such a twist it, it was I I was thrown I was like okay cuz I I didn't when I when I first saw them, you know, in the, in the uh, castle, or whatever, uh, talking about uh, the hand of the king dying, or whatever. I didn't even realize their relationship. You know what I mean? Um, right off, 
And then, you know, once I realized, okay, they're brother and sister. And then when I saw them in a tie, I was like, yo. And that's when I hated her. Cause this is when I hated Cersei. Cause she said, and you could tell this help, this is why she's so good as an actress. Just Cause the way she delivered that line, her subtext was so clear. He saw us. He saw us. You you know what you gotta do. Yep. That I was like, this this be all right. right here. This be all right, <laughs> right here. She evil. Yeah. That yeah, too, I, saw, I was like, wow. Yeah, I was gonna say when I saw that for the first time, I just that was the moment I knew it was gonna be messed up. I was like, you you pulled this out in the first episode, mm-hmm. y'all already incested in here, and then you want to kill a child on top of that. That's crazy. And just you not know where it was either not, oh well, maybe we should kill him this way, just boop, out of nowhere, just by just killed him. Yeah. Yep, that now so that the first time I watched that I was I was like, dang, but it really just pushed this little kid out the window. Like Yo, that scene, that scene though, like I'm just thinking from an actor's perspective, like and just how they did that scene. Like I didn't see it coming really. I didn't see cause because Jamie's character was like, you could tell he's like, come on, it's a kid. Like, what is he going to do? What is he going to do? And then all of a sudden, what you do for love? She's like, oh my gosh. I cannot believe it. Yep. So we see, we see how twisted, we see how twisted Lannisters are. Because they don't, they they, so and, you, and you see it, you see it throughout the, the show. They don't give a damn. Like, they, they, they are playing the game to win. Like, as, as, as e said, the Game of Thrones, they're definitely playing it to win. And in fact, Cersei had a quote that I love that, that actually is like the, the best depiction of his show. She said, when you play the Game of Thrones, you either win or you die. And I was yep. like, that is such a freaking great quote to like yep. talk about like this show. Cause that's, that's literally the, that's literally the show. It's like either you win or you're going to die. Like or one of the things is going to happen. Um, And so I'm just like, oh man, this, this show. So that's a great start to the show. Episode one is a great start. For sure. Then episode two, we get to see like people start to go about like the start of their their arc, right? First thing I noted here was that Jon Snow finally takes off for the wall, right? He's like, I'm gonna go follow my uncle Benjamin because I have no life uh here in the <laughs> in Winterfell or whatever, you know. But I also understand because Catelyn was such an asshole to to Jon Snow, like. I get it, you know, like your husband, you know, stepped out on you um, and, you know, has has this kid. But it's just like, damn, like, how long are you going to hold his grudge? Right. right. Being that, you know, like it, this, it's just it's, he, he had a bastard kid. Move on. You know, but she just like she's such an ass to him. I understand why he left because one, he wanted to go have more purpose elsewhere. But then two, I'm like, I want to leave Kate Callan too. Like, I was like, get the hell away from me. Cause she was just sneakering at that man every single episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. I for I, me, go ahead. Oh, I, 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 I forgot. Like whenever I was watching it again, I didn't notice that it was um Jon Snow that gave Arya the sword needle. Mm-hmm. And I, hey, that's where she got it from. Um, but it shows like the love that he has for his, you know, for his siblings. And like you said, like Catelyn just like treat him like trash. So I'm like, bro, like he loves his siblings. You can't just forget it. But like he has love for the family. You're, You're the right. only one like the guy. Cause... Every everybody loved John. Rob loved John. Sansa, Arya, like everybody had love for John. It was just I didn't realize how much. And that's throughout this first season too. I didn't, I didn't realize how much I did I dislike Lady Catelyn. Like she she was like such a, a like when I first watched it, her character wasn't that really significant to me. But like as I'm rewatching for a second time, I'm like, I don't really like her. Not that I don't hate her. I don't hate her to the level I hate Cersei or like Joffrey, but she's just annoying. I'm like, you're just sniveling, whining. Like, I'm like, what purpose do you serve? She does have power. She does do some good things. But I'm just like, you're I don't know, your character is just annoying. Well, add to that, I feel like a lot of the issues in the first season could have been avoided if Catelyn didn't do what she did. Facts. But we'll get facts. We'll get we'll get hundred percent, a hundred percent. And then also, Ed Ned, if he yeah. wasn't just so freaking stubborn and honorable, it's like, bro, like, calm down. Yeah. Like, I get it. I get it. You're 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 the Lord of Winterfell. You know, generations. You've been, a, but just like like damn, bro, like calm it down just a tad. Like 
So he so that that brings to the next point. Ned hears about like John Aaron dying and like hears that you know maybe there's some type of conspiracy there. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna be the hand of the king for that reason, right? He chooses to go down to and then also Rob kind of convinces him too. Uh Robert Baratheon convinces him that he needs him. So he chooses to accept the role uh as the hand of the king. Um and so that's that man, looking back on that decision for him, I'm just like, bro, you could have just yeah. stayed in Winterfell, but that wouldn't have been the show, obviously. But yeah, you could have just stayed in Winterfell and just enjoyed your life. Cause you, he, how old was he? He was like, I mean, he looked like he was 40s, 50s, you 40s, know, like, yeah. <laughs> so you, you've lived this entire life, and then within two months, you end up RP. You know, I was just like, damn, bro, uh, but that shows. That shows like how everything can show so quickly. I mean, everything can turn so quickly. Like you think you're fine. He even had his title, and all of a sudden, oh, everything is not fine anymore. Like literally, so quick, just because someone got a new piece of information or somebody killed somebody else. It's it's just yeah. it ripples throughout the whole everybody storyline. Facts, and it's and that's that's what creates all the craziness too. Um. Also, I also anybody want to touch on Ned? Any, any thoughts well, there? Is this, is this the episode where? Is this the episode where um, Catelyn's sister sends the, the the pigeon message, and that's when Ned finds out, like, okay, there's something foul at play. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's what I was referring to earlier. You know, now we find out what his motivation to become the hand of king. He wants to find out why this guy who he you know looked to as a father died mysteriously. You know, and yeah. he suspects you know based on. Um, Catelyn's uh, sister's message that Lisa. he was murdered. You know what I'm saying? Like something's something's at play, and he he got to go do some investigating. I mean, then again, that's when I'm like, okay, nah, bro. <laughs> and that's nah. the, the investigators will get some <laughs> yeah. killed. Like I, again, that's that's the honor thing. Like he's such an honorable person, he needs to find out like the truth and then tell the truth. And I, I get that. I agree. I do, Back I in those that. days, nobody gave a damn about the truth. There's even an episode where Cer- Cersei's like. We make the truth what we want to make the truth. Like, yeah. you know, if, if I'm the queen, I can make the truth wherever I want it to be. Which we see she did. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? In the later episode. Yeah. yeah. Sierra? Oh, I was going to say that it just, I lost my thought, but I lost my thought. It's okay. <laughs> Fairy dust. It's going. Uh, I love it's the fact fun. that I can actually talk again. So this is like perfect. I, I, I love the fact that I connect to my phone. Now we're good. We're, I don't know what's wrong <laughs> with my Wi-Fi, but my phone yeah. is better. Um, anyways, so yeah, so also I touched on um also I love the fact that we get some backstory to Robert and Leanna and his love for uh Ned's sister. Um and yeah. talks about like her dying, uh Rhaegar, you know, kidnapping her and, and killing her, uh, according to Robert in that whole story um there. Um and so that's is that was a that was an interesting uh, part of it because I, I was I, you know you, you hear about Liana like obviously they talk about her in the first episode uh, but knowing that there is somebody else that Robert truly loved was interesting and then like understand her character um, you know no spoilers but it's gonna be interesting um, but you, did y'all have a problem with you know this is just kind of a technical thing with that that transition from that moment where you know Robert and Ned are in, in the uh, crypt and they're talking about Liana or whatever and then I think I think he makes reference to the Targaryens, um, like it's like yeah they're not all dead there's there's one or something, and then it cuts to the Targaryens but I don't know maybe when I first watched it maybe I missed what he was saying saying about the Targaryens and I thought when they jumped to um, uh, uh, Khaleesi, Viserys, I thought, Daenerys, Daenerys is her name she is a Khaleesi but Daenerys is her name. yeah I can't remember Daenerys yeah. When they jumped to that shot of her, I thought he was flashing back to Liana. I was confused. Mm. Oh, gotcha. I, I would have yeah. loved flashbacks. I would have loved flashbacks to see, like, you know, everything with the Mad King. They're like, oh, we fought in this war together. Just talking about Liana. But I do think I understand why they didn't have the flashbacks. And I think it adds to the story because back then, yeah, I mean, you didn't have really good history books or whatever. It was literally, they were writing down what they saw. And it was from somebody else's, like, mind. 
And so how do we know stories? We go through storytelling. So we don't really know what happens with the Mad King. Was the Mad King really mad or did they just want a rebellion? Was Lyanna really everything or did he just want her instead of marrying Cersei? Like, but I think that adds to the story piece, like we'll just never really know. Yep. Yeah. Very, very true. The history, history will tell um yeah. what went down but no i i i um i get i didn't get that feeling like as soon as they introduced viserys and, and daenerys i I thought that's just kind of they just cut to to them okay. um as the targaryens but yeah daenerys daenerys, daenerys is a very interesting character and uh will be very important so i'm gonna say so um so yeah so then the the biggest thing that happens in episode um what did i say i'll call, tell a couple of different things Episode two is uh, there's an assassination, an assassination attempt on Bran that was wild because you're like, this kid is the, the, why is this guy the focal point? Honestly, throughout the entire show, I'm like, why is, why Bran? But anyways, um, so, so he's, he's the focal point of an assassination attempt. Catelyn's there in the room, obviously, you know, the, the, the wolf saves her, saves Bran, and then she realizes that, okay, this wasn't an accident. Like Brandon just fall out this tower. Somebody's trying to cover up something, and she blames the Lannisters, and that is what starts everything, right? Because she she's like, I'm gonna go to to King's Landing. I'm gonna tell Ned what just happened, and then obviously you know everything goes on with the beef between the Starks and Lannisters. But that situation starts the initial beef that sparks everything between the the, the Starks and the Lannisters. Um. Any comments about that before I move on to the next point within episode two? Yeah, it, uh, that moment, like when she says, like, it was the Lannisters, it mm-hmm. just adds to that you have for the Lannisters. Just because, like, you're about to kill a kid mm-hmm. for what? You know, so it just adds to that. Um, and, you know, it, they don't say it, but, like, in my mind, I was like, okay, so if they want to kill a kid, it's it's either Jamie or Cersei. And so, you know, you just hate them more for that. And I don't know, that was just me. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's just, you just just another, like you said, another log on the fire of hating the Lannisters. Um, they're just entitled. They're just entitled pricks. That's what that's what they are. So. For sure. For me, that's, you know, um, speaking from a, just like a technical standpoint, I was like, I was confused a little bit again. Like watching the first, I was like, okay, this guy just pops up all of a sudden. For what? Why? And so yeah. I didn't, I wasn't sure if he was like one of them uh, white walkers or whatever they call. I wasn't yeah. sure at first. So it's like, I was, I literally had to rewind it to, to catch it. I was like, okay, what just happened? Like, <laughs> what's, just happened? what's happening here? Yeah. So I didn't, I, I couldn't appreciate just how how the director did that scene. From a directorial standpoint, uh, I I would have liked to have seen maybe a little. Uh, I'm sorry, if my, I rubbed my mic and y'all heard that. But um, I would have liked to have seen um, a moment between Jamie and uh, Cersei conspiring to to make that moment happen. Did I, mean, I miss that? I don't, no, I don't no, know. No, maybe no, no, you know, they it, do some stuff real subtly, so maybe no, I no, no. It. They 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 didn't do that, but you also that's also part of the mystery is figuring out like who. Who did hire the hit, yeah. right? Like, was it Jamie? Was it Jamie and Cersei, or was it Tyrion, or was it was it actually the Lannisters? Like, we you assume it's the Lannisters, obviously, because they push yeah. Bran, and then you hear Cersei talking about that Bran's alive, and what are we gonna do, stuff like that. But like, you just don't. There's not. I mean, they do. I guess. Tell you, let me bring that back because there is a scene where they talk about Bran being alive, yeah. um, and then she sees him being alive. You know what I mean? Like she walks into the room and she sees him like not alive, but you know what I mean? Like still yeah. breathing and like he can still yeah. wake up and figure things out. So they know. So you kind of think it's Jamie and and, and uh Cersei, but you still don't know. Like it could be Tyrion, it could be whoever. Tyrion. Mm. I mean, hey, hey, we'll get to episode five where the blade's his. Um, and that starts that sparks it. So um, but anyways, so yeah, so that that was that was a big moment. Obviously, Bran eventually wakes up with the death of the direwolf. There's always connection between direwolves and the Starks. The direwolf is obviously obviously the sigil as well for the for the Starks. So that's a a correlation there. Uh, but then yeah. I wanted to point out 
we see the evil within Joffrey when he gets the boy killed. Um, and Sansa lies for Joffrey. How do you, you guys feel about that? That's why her wolf died. <laughs> What'd you say? I said that's why her wolf died. <laughs> right. Look, that's the scene I was talking about. So disloyal. You you really gonna sit there and mm. act like you don't know what happened. Like for real, I was so mad. I was like, you are trash. You're trash. Like you're not gonna speak up and say, no, nah, no, nah, it was your little bratty ass son starting stuff and he got his ass what by my sister <laughs> you know what I'm saying like but put your put yourself in her shoes put yourself too. in her shoes would you have done would you have actually told the truth yes Tiara be for real yes with my mom and my dad standing there in my house in my country absolutely would have said he definitely got his ass kicked no. she, 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 at that team they were like traveling weren't they like they were already out of the <laughs> They were they were in the uh they were in the on the on King's Road. So it happened. Oh, they were in the road. Yeah, oh, Ke- Kella wasn't there. Was... She was still she was still chilling at home. But Ned yeah, Ned yeah. had left with them. Oh yeah. I think Ned... that was confusing though. Like I was very confused. I mean, maybe we can talk about this later. Just just the journey. Like I like when Ned left, like I told you, Savannah, I thought at one point he had left, but then it seemed like he was still like they were still in uh, Winterfell. So just to kind of just kind of talk about you know the the in transition to episode three, episode one they're in Winterfell. So we we get Winterfell and we get King's Landing and then also we get uh, where um, I forgot where Daenerys is at. I forgot what it's called, but where the Dothraki are, right? So you have those three specific spots, and then episode two you're still in Winterfell. But then you go, you all stay, move on from Winterfell to King's Road. So you have Winterfell and King's Road, and then where Daenerys is. And fun fact, I don't know if you know this or not, Brendan, but if you watch the opening, like, not the recap, but the opening, like, credits with the theme mm-hmm. song, it will actually show you every single episode what they're going to talk about in the episode. So, like, what areas they're going to focus on. So it'll show I have the- not caught that. I yeah. just assumed it was all the same thing. <laughs> no, no, no. If you, every time you watch it, it'll, it'll show, like, King's Landing, Winterfell, and then whatever area Daenerys is at. Or if there's other areas, like with the war, because obviously you're in season two, with the war, you'll see like those pop up as well uh, on the map, just so you know. So. Oh, wow, that's great. That's, that's the I, I did not pick up. I just assumed it was the same introduction every time, and it was always the same. Oh, the wall, the wall as well. So you'll see the wall, because that's where Jon Snow is, and then mm-hmm. like, you'll see the different places. Or when they go north of the wall, you'll see like North of the wall, and then all the different things. Oh wow, that's cool. Eman, um, let me see. No, like you can see, you can tell when they trend when they're on the road, because um, Ned tells John, you know, goodbye. Like he's going to the wall. Ned's yep. going south. But, you know, that's when you know that they're on that they left Winterfell, um, and they're going south. But yeah, that did that did bother me that Sansa Sansa didn't tell the truth. But at the same time, I was like, Joffrey, you're a little punk, man. Like, you got to <laughs> accept defeat. I, which, I, I mean, to a certain point, I understand. Yeah. He just became like, yeah, I mean, he's a kid. He's a he's a print, prince. So I understand, like, you no know, royalty, whatever. Uh, he has privileges. But I was like, he, he got beat. And then he starts crying about it. I'm like, bro, like, just, you know, I don't know. I mean, he, that that bothered me. Tonsa lied about um what happened, which Ned explains to Arya what happened, why she lied later on, which helped, you know, me, at least. I don't know about you guys. But yeah, that whole scene, I was just like, Sansa, like, really? Come on, man. You could do better than that. Yeah. Yeah, Sansa yeah. is definitely um, smitten uh, by Joffrey, which is so interesting, because he's like, I guess because it's the golden hair and it's different. Both of them have... have... <laughs> Sansa's beautiful, by the way. She's like, she's these blue eyes, red hair. Like, I understand... But like Joffrey, I'm like he's just like a normal looking dude, but he's also a prince, so you kind of like you know I don't know. Well, probably, yeah. probably like he's the king's son, so you know yeah. everyone wants the king's son because they only met one time, so it's like I don't know how you can yeah. be smitten with you know just one one look at him. Yeah, 
Well, I think I think it's the prospect of her becoming queen, you know, because she knows that she's she's betrothed to the prince, and you know, when he becomes king, she's going to be queen. So I think she's probably more smitten by that, but you know, more so than him. And I think she understands that that's just her, that's part of her responsibility in in the betrothal that you know she has to be loyal to him, you know, and love him and. And all that, but I think it's really just the prospect of, in my opinion, it's the prospect of being becoming queen that she's really. Yeah, I feel like she knows that's her responsibility, but I don't feel like that's like what she wants. She's just like doing it because. Can you all hear me? Yeah, you're good. Okay. You're good. okay, she's just doing it because, like, obviously, like she's a lady, obviously going to marry a title. Like, I have to do this, this, and that. But what I just don't agree with is that it's your sister. I mean, I know it's a prince, but treason comes when you talk about the king, not the prince. So she would have been yeah. just fine. Yeah, that's she that's was like, uh, no, that's not what happened at all. Yeah, no, Yo, no. I was, I was so mad. I, I, I was, I was heated. Yeah. <laughs> I was heated. I was like, she need her ass. Yeah. So the transition is episode three. This is what I was talking about. So we go from Winterfell. The, the main storyline Winterfell to King's Road to then we get to King's Landing where um you know Sansa, Arya and uh and Ned are gonna be living as Ned is the hand of the king. And so now we get introduced to like the main players in King's Landing, right? Peter Baelish, which is little little finger, um Viserys, I think is, is that his name? Viserys? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Viserys, which is the the eunuch um and he has like all these different like little kids that are which is so creepy the the pedophilia like incest pedophilia this dude has like, all these little kids <laughs> working for him my little spiders he calls them um it's such a such a weird dynamic in the show sometimes and there's you other people about the guy, right? the unit. yeah you yeah yeah. yeah they what's they, his they, name again what's his character name viserys viserys but the but the brother's name is Viserys too, Targaryen. I think it's Varys. Varys, Varys, Varys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What's uh, Littlefinger's actual name? I can't remember. Baelish. 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 Peter Baelish. Yeah, but they call him Littlefinger, and he tells that story obviously too. Um, but then you also have the Grand Maester. You have a few different characters to introduce, but the main the main people, the conspirators, Baelish and Varys. Those two are just like so, so conniving because they both have their own. They all have ambition. Um, yes. for the throne. So, um, anyways, so that's that's uh that's what you get introduced to there. Yeah, and also, so this this is where I, I start like seeing this because you start to see the stories split apart, right? You start seeing Ned's life, uh, Sansa and Arya start living out their lives of what's going on, Catelyn. Is you know coming down to 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 figure out everything going on with with uh, the kid. So a lot of stuff like it starts starts to splinter off into people's different stories. But the main one we we focus on is Ned and his life at the Capitol. And so he figures out that one, Capitol's broke. Robert's been doing some wild crap in the Capitol. Um, but then two, there's like there's a conspiracy going on with the whole kid situation. So like. If you guys were Ned in that situation, how would y'all have gone about handling some of the stuff he had to handle? Would you have done it the same way he did? Or would you have like been a little more tactful with everything? I would have definitely been more tactful because I mean I like watching it again, you see so many opportunities of chances that he should have took and deals that he should have took. Like, I think even uh, Baylor said in an episode, like, you know what the right thing is to do. You just don't want to do it. And um, I think that for sure. But I 100% would not have trusted Baelish at all with anything ever. Not even a penny of anything. Yeah. yeah. I've been thinking. Go ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead, man. Uh, uh, so I've been thinking about that question, so I'm like, what would I have done differently? And it's it's hard because I can't figure out a better, a good way to go about it and not have the same result that he did. A little, well, with Ned's honor, you know, yeah. in, that's that's the only hard part. Like, he, he could lie about a few things or keep things a secret, sure, but because he wants to tell the truth about everything, that's where everything, you know, 
he ends up where he ends up. Um, yeah. But yeah, I can't think of a better way to do it other than like what Peter what Peter Baelish was talking about. Like you have to do certain, you know what to do, but you don't want to do that. So I don't know. Yeah. I haven't figured it out. Man, he should he should listen up to Peter Bayless and just went for the throne. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Look, so I, I'm, first of all, I'm missing a part where he found out. I must have missed the part where he found out, you know, about um, bald head dudes. Uh, Varys. Little pedophilia. Yeah, Varys' little boys. I missed that part that you just mentioned. He talks about the spiders. Okay. He just yeah. says Oh, but Ned found found out about something. No, 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 no. I just, I just yeah. talked about I just talked about how weird that is that he has these little. Spiders. Oh yeah, okay, okay. All these little boys running around everywhere for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, we 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 figured out he was gay in the very beginning, so uh, he's a pedophile, right? Um, but uh, no, I don't know. I don't know that I would have done anything differently. You know, I I felt like Ned was pretty tactful. Um. Especially the way he handled, you know, when he found out that uh, <laughs> that uh, those were James' kids, not Robert's, you know. Um, and I was like, yeah, I think the way he handled the queen was like, look, you got to, you should be gone by the time you get back because it's going down. I'm letting him know. Yeah. But then he just didn't get the chance to. And and I think like uh, like Eman said, it's just the honor in him you know he, he's gonna do the right thing and so if it were me i would do the right thing i'd call you out on it and say hey i know this <laughs> and that's my boy because it's like he's got to be loyal to the king too you know what i'm saying yeah. like and well, this this ain't just like okay a king that just heard about you you know and how good you were and he wants you on his team. This is somebody you rocked with. You know what I'm saying? You went to war with this guy. Y'all rock it. Y'all got a relationship. This is your homie. So, like, you got to be loyal. I'm going to be loyal. I'm going to be like, look, get your traffic tell out before my boy come back because I'm letting him know what's going down. And you know what that's going to mean for you. Well, so. this is find out that the whole game, what the Game of Thrones is about. Because you can see Ned doesn't know how to play or doesn't know or doesn't want to play the game. He just wants to figure out what the truth, live out his life, go back to go back to the north. And you know, mm-hmm. he just doesn't want he he doesn't want the throne. He wants to go back home. Um but Cersei wants to stay in power. So she's he's gonna play the game and she's gonna play to win. Yeah, that's what she said too. Um mm-hmm. yeah, no, hundred percent. I there's so many outs that Ned has, and we'll get to I mean, we're still on season episode three, but we kind of bounce around, which I love, you know, talking about these different points. Um, but yeah, there's so many outs that Ned had to like just go back home. And he tried to. He, he tried to. There was a point where he tried to go back home and he got stuck. Yeah. His curiosity got him stuck. Um, mm-hmm. and that's that's tragic. Um, so there's points where he couldn't stay alive, but again, it wouldn't be the same show if he had stayed alive. So, but episode three, that's what I want to touch on is is we see life in the capital, right? Uh, Jon Snow realized that life at the wall is complete shit. And that what he <laughs> dreamed of, where he was like, man, this wall is going to be, you know, we're protecting the, the realm of men and, you know, we're keeping the wall and all these different things. And he gets there and it's like, there are the worst of the worst people. Like there's rapists. There are all these different people from dungeons that are basically criminals that are at the wall. And he has to, he's like the, the best. He's the best of all of them. Um, and so he realizes that and obviously he has some um some angst there, but then also he's like because he's the best, he gets some like criticism from leadership uh of there. But there's some interesting characters there. We get to see um Mormont, the the oldest, the eldest Mormont. So he's he's a leader of the wall and some other characters within the wall. But I never was like huge fan of like I don't want to call it the wall arc. But like, just like the 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 walls felt just so unimportant. I'm like, why are we here? There's nothing going on here. Now there will be, but there's nothing going on here. So why does this matter? Now we do get introduced to some characters in episode four, like Sam, uh, who definitely is a great dude. Uh, but just just I don't know, John John Snow felt so useless in up in season one because I'm like, yeah. you're just you're just at the wall. You're 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 teaching these guys how to fight. You're complaining about it. You're cleaning 
you know, the things. You do take your oath to be you know, a brother of a night's watch, but it's just like, it just seems so boring. Like, John just seems so boring. So that's that was kind of my thoughts from episode three. Uh, I have a couple different notes here as well, but any any key moments or thoughts from you guys? I think we see, I think we see John's um, art really well here. Um, and this is where we, we see how good he is, both in character and as a source. You know what I mean? Okay. Like he's That's fair. he's whooping everybody. Like he's clearly the best. Like you say, he he's he's the best thing there in more ways than one. You know what I mean? Um, like he's the best swordsman. Nobody's beating him. You know what I mean? And we learned that he's he also well now that was episode four that we learned that. But um, but yeah, nobody there is gonna whoop his ass because he's got the skills right, he's tearing everybody up. And he's but we also see him learning lessons along the way. You know what I mean? Um, so I think this is where we really see the growth of his character. So I, I loved it. I loved it. I, I think those those wall scenes were great. I don't, bro. But again, that's just me. Um, I don't know if anybody else has comments on that. Yeah, for, for me, the initial thought of like the people defending the wall after the first episode, I'm like, these are the guys they are going to fight that. And I'm just like, <laughs> y'all lost. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's real. That's real, though. That's a good point. Like, that's a good point, but it, I mean, Jon Snow gonna train them all up. You know what I mean? Yeah. They all get like Jon Snow, they'll be good. True. That is true. Really, um, la- sorry, yeah. Tierra, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I don't really have too many comments on this. It was just I feel the same way Savannah. It's just kind of like filler episode to me. But I mean, I understand <laughs> <laughs> the importance of it, but it does feel like filler. Yeah. And so, so episode four too felt a little filler too. So in ep- to finish the episode three, um, the one other thing I noted was we see Daenerys start to become more comfortable in her role as Khaleesi. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you see her like move from you know having sex like a slave to like a woman, right? Like 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 Cal Drogo's woman, right? You see her get pregnant. Yeah. You see her command the Dothraki army. Like, you see her just start to you see her start to be more confident in herself as like. Her, her own woman versus being Viserys' sister um, mm-hmm. and a, a slave for just, you know, so it's, it's interesting the first couple of episodes you see, and it really, I mean, her arc is crazy, but you see Daenerys' like confidence in like herself starting to grow and understanding that she has power, right? That she's a, she's a woman with power. Her brother is insignificant in her life. Um, she is the reason why you know, he's even around still. And he and you see that like in the in the whole like I don't know if it was like woods or bamboo or whatever that was, but like he's trying to like talk to her like she's insignificant. And she and she's like, Don't ever talk to me like that again. I am the Khaleesi. Yeah. I'm like, I see you. Like, like step up to yeah. that man. Like know your power. Yeah. Like you have a whole army that it with you know, you tell him you want them killed, like you can be killed. And that kind of sucks for him because he thought he had this whole situation handled, but you don't. Nobody respects your authority because you have no army. Right. Um, episode four, just to move on, Sam Tarley, uh, we see him join the wall, which I I have an affinity for Sam as a big guy myself, you know, like a boy that likes to eat. I like, I'm like, bro, Sam, I understand it, bro. Like, you're just a guy. Is it Tarley or Tully? It's Tarley, right? Tarley. Yeah, he's Tully. Oh, Tully? No, I think it's Tarley. I remember I, th- I thought it was Tarly, yeah, yeah. But um, Sam, yeah, Sam's character, I, I really enjoy. Every single time, I always enjoy seeing him on the screen. He's definitely a fun character. We also see the, we also see Ned starting to figure out more and more pieces of the puzzle. We get to see um, Gingery Baratheon, who is Robert's bastard son. Ned finds him and starts to figure out um, the different things. But there's, there's not really like much in episode four, at least in my opinion. You guys can talk about we're going to talk about episode four, but the biggest thing that happened in episode four to me was one, the the hound in the mountain fighting, like that scene with uh, them two fighting each other was fantastic, brother versus brother, and like hearing that backstory. But then two, obviously, Catelyn having Tyrion seized uh, was a big moment as well to end episode four. Uh, so those those are a couple things for me that I noted. Uh, anything for you guys or comments on any of those different moments I mentioned? Yeah, for, for me, it was when Ned Stark was in his office and um, Cersei goes into his office and starts asking questions. 
mm-hmm. when she walked off, I was like, oh, she's going to go make a plan because she already sees him as a threat. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just, so I, you know, I was just like, what's she going to, what's her plan going to be? You know, she's either going to go sleep with Jamie or she's going to go make a plan on the two. Yeah. <laughs> um, She's gonna go sleep with Jamie so he could go, you know, yeah. kill Ned. Well, <laughs> Jamie's not the only the only family member she sleeps with. If you see later, yeah, yeah, but it's the first time. What did I miss? We see that later, as in like after season. No, as this season, I mean, this season. This season. This season. Do, you, do you remember? I, okay, so the, the okay, so we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk about it right now. But in there's a there's a scene. Where there's a, there's a boy with blonde hair, same boy that was giving Robert the wine, oh, her cousin. Wait, wait. Yeah, that's her cousin. That's yeah. her cousin. I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah. that's her cousin. She's like, cousin. Go, she's like, go back to bed. That's the same boy that was sleeping with the he was the gay, he he was the gay knight, right? He sleeping no. with Brinley Baratheon. No, yeah, that's yeah. a different. That's oh. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, so, uh, Sir uh, Sir Lawrence, Sir Lawrence. Oh, Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, Lawrence. With uh. The other Baratheon. Renly. Renly. Renly, yeah. What they look alike. They yeah. do look alike. Um, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, but yeah, I don't yeah. Know it was the it was a night it was a cousin. Wait, pause real quick. It was a night because remember she gave the he gave um sign to the rose, but then winked at Renly behind her. And he was like, like whatever, whatever. So it was a night. You're you're right, Tierra. But yeah, that was that was sign. That's their cousin. They they are yeah. I didn't. I didn't know. I I missed that somehow. Well, but hey, she's a, it, she's a incestuous slore. Yeah, slore. It does. It does. Uh, I, I will say this, Brendan. This doesn't ruin anything, but it does get brought up in previous, like in, in see later seasons. It just when I saw that, it made me think of that. I was like, oh, okay, that's. I never. I don't remember that happening. But now when I watched, I was like, there it is. That's that's the episode where they get together. Um, to bring to bring up your one of your points when Catelyn um arrests uh what's the name Ty- Tyrion yep. I was like didn't didn't Ned tell you not to do anything yet before you left uh, landing and you, she, she, as soon as she said as soon as Tyrion recognized her she stands up and starts naming all these people which I was like oh that's cool she knows all these people yeah um, and she arrests I'm like bro you what are you doing you know. But, I don't know. I was like, bro, Ned just told you not to do anything yet, and then you already took advantage and did something. Yeah. So that's just... what... Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say she's just the worst. But keep going. That's what. Like... That's what wise do. They don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> they don't listen. It's the only female on this podcast here is offended. Um... I'm not offended. I'm not a wife. <laughs> Right. Uh, but yeah, so that that was yeah, I agree, man. That's and that's what again, that's what honestly I guess what it's what gives her husband killed. Now it's also his honorability and trying to figure things out and telling Cersei that she's no longer queen. Uh, but that is definitely a factor in the 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 tensions. The tensions continue to spark between and I love that. Like you see like the build, you see like the you see the animosity between the Lannisters and, and Starks just keep building. Like you see Ned and Jamie always just at each other's throats. Like, you're waiting, we're waiting for what happens in, C- in episode five, which is the the sword fight between Jamie and Ned. Like, they've been, like, having a mental battle of the wits, but they, we finally get to see it happen in the physical, which is Ned and Jamie fighting um, because they've captured Tyrion. Um, but then also you see, like, the animosity between Rob Baratheon, Robert Baratheon and his wife, you see it between Jamie and Robert Baratheon and how he has him do different things. And so I love it. I, I love seeing like little little like micro battles that happen throughout the show. It's just it's just fantastic writing, in my opinion, uh, from yeah. from the from the writers. So episode five, um, I, again, that's that's the biggest thing that I noted was the duel um, that sparked from Catelyn having Tyrion in prison. Right. Um, that's that's the biggest thing I noted was. I was waiting for that duel to happen. Like, yeah, that that was fantastic, and I'm sad that they cut it short by having the guy stab him in the back of the leg. But we all know that Ned whooped that man's ass. <laughs> like, oh, like sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, because I was, I was 
I was upset at that. I was like, oh, come on, man. The little, the little uh, rookie knight or whatever going to stab him in the back of the leg, man. Come on, let, let Ned just take his ass out. <laughs> take him out. That's what I was I was expecting that. And I was like, ah. <laughs> but I was yeah. happy that they didn't kill Ned. I was happy they didn't kill him. Because oh, I would have been, been, been more mad if they had killed him in that moment. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we missed though was that at this point when they had the duel, Ned wasn't hand of the king anymore, but he was still, you know, you trying to use his authority, which I thought was like how fast the word spreads around. Um, but one thing that I liked about Ned is that whenever he found out Catelyn had arrested Tyrion, he was like, "Yeah, she did it under my orders, under the orders of the hand of the king." So like the loyalty between the husband and wife. Oh uh, yeah. That, that oh yeah. Great. That. Yeah, that's game. That was, that was uh, it was a great honor but terrible mistake but what yeah. else could you do in a situation like what, what else could you what else could you do but no my wife did it without my orders like no it doesn't matter what you say like he's still gonna fight you i think that's what mm-hmm. but i did note that though ned resigns the hand of the king because he doesn't want to kill daenerys robert is dead on killing daenerys he's against it so he resigns as the hand and plans on leaving and the only reason he doesn't get a chance he, he tells sansa and Arya. Uh, we're leaving. He also overhears Arya also overhears Varys talking about the plot to have the Starks and the Lannisters fight each other and start a war. And so all this, he's like, "Yeah, I'm getting the hell up out of here. Like, I'm 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 done with this place, right?" But Baelish comes in and he's like, "I have some freaking information for you that you want to know if you just follow me and." That's where he gets captured, you know, that caught by Jamie and they go through the whole battle or whatever. So like he would have been gone if he just wasn't so so inquisitive yeah. and he needs to know yeah. everything goes down. He's a detective. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's, he's just he's just he that he this the love of, of knowledge. Um also I also want to touch on this. What were you guys' thoughts on the scene with Cersei and Robert? Because I love that scene. I thought it was fantastic. Them talking to each other and talking about like how she did at one point actually love him. And like now yeah. the animosity and that whole story. Like, what were you guys' like, thoughts on that scene? Because I, I loved it. I thought it was real. I just like, it, it was just real. Like, hey, we hate each other, but like this marriage is purely out of obligation. And like, I'm going to be straight up about it. Like, I know you don't like it. I know I don't like it, but it is what it is. And what I really, really loved about that moment is that like she was still kind of like holding out a little bit I felt like and she was like was there ever a chance and he was like no just straight up no and I think that that like helped her like not that I care about her <laughs> but that like helped her to just be like all right complete separation from me. yeah yeah I yeah. like that thing too I thought it was a good moment um just because you kind of see okay we we know that they they ain't really loyal to each other, but then we hear that backstory and, and like that she did actually at one point care for him, but he was always about uh, Ned's sister, you know what I mean? And he just couldn't ever really give himself, give his heart to uh, Cersei or whatever. Um, so I thought just the way that was played out in that dialogue and how it was like, it wasn't like she was over went on with the emotion or anything like that. It was just like, this is just a matter of fact, we know the nature of our marriage and our relationship. You know, this is what it is. And, but we know we gotta, you know, work together to rule this kingdom and whatever. So, you know, let's just make it happen. Yeah, I feel like whenever she asked him, like, was there ever a chance? And he said no. She takes one last sip, puts the cup down, and it's like, it made it, it, it finalized her plans of what she was gonna do, or what she was already planning to do. Maybe if he would've said yeah. yes, would have turned out differently, but again, that changes the whole show. So, yeah. you know, that's that's a great point, bro. Like, because he does die the next episode from the pig or the boar. I wonder if, like, that conversation, if it if if he had said yes, would he still be alive? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, anyways, that's that's an interesting thought. Uh, thought there, even she just brought up that just went through my head. Um, because like, yeah, what if, what if he has said yes, and there's a future for us, then she wouldn't have to worry about like her lineage because she's, she's set, like she has Robert, she's set, they're good. But since he's like, no, there's no, like, 
anything there. She's like, okay, well, let me think of some contingency plans, um, everything there. So he, again, he died from a boar, not from her, but um, still, it's my thought there. Um, anyway, so that that's episode five. Uh, episode six, we see Robert force Ned to be the hand of the king again. He tells him to calm the beef between the households, but that never dies down ever. Um, <laughs> Danny has a realization. This is something I noted too. She she's picking up like the dragon eggs, and like she just touches it's in the it's in the fire. She picks it up, and then her her servant girl like knocks it out of her hand and touches it, and she gets burnt. But Danny doesn't get burnt. She's like interesting that I didn't get burnt, but she got burnt. You know, knowing that uh, you know she's like okay, something something's different about me. Um, Tyrion asks for a trial by combat. I love bro. Tyrion Tyrion's like. I don't know. He's just such a smart dude, bro. Like, yes. he's so well read. And yes. you know, asking for a trial by combat. And then knowing that he has the he has the money to pay anybody he wants to. Like, I, oh my God. Like the guy is just a is just a smart guy. I don't know. Those are those are three things I know. There's a couple more things we'll talk about, but like anything from that or other key moments you guys will talk about from episode three, episode six as we keep going down the storyline of Game of Thrones season one. Wow. Yeah, I, when when I'm sorry, uh, when Robert tells Ned, you know, he needs him to be hand of the king again, you know, whatever. It it goes back to one of the lines that he said told earlier to Ned. He was like, "I'm surrounded by Lannisters." I was like, "It would make sense that he wouldn't a loyal friend there when he's surrounded by one of the strongest houses in the in the whole series." Um, so I mean, it just shows like the he he knows he needs someone loyal to him. And in my mind, I'm just like, why did you wait till now to have, why do you only have one loyal, per, one person you know you're, you're, is loyal to you, surrounding you, and you have, like, a whole bunch of people that are Lannisters, which, I mean, they're married, but still. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. That's the one that's the motive to kill him the most. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, no, yeah, um, I I like the, the whole battle. Uh, how uh, Tyrion decides to, you know, get his freedom by having somebody fight for him. You know, like I'm right there with you, bro. Tyrion is just so smart. He he leverages his strengths, which is his wittiness and his his intellect, and he leverages it very well and his wealth, right? And I I like that scene. You know what I mean? And just that whole battle, how um, Bron, what's his name, Bron, right? Bron, I think it's Bron. 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 Bron in this episode too. Yeah, he um, you know, during that battle, it, at first you're just thinking, okay, he's not gonna gonna really go all out, but it's like he was plotting. He knew he was gonna beat the dude. He knew that he could beat him, but he was just like being reserved. And then when she said, you know, fight, she told her man to fight. You know, oh no, she was telling him to fight because he seemed like he was just being timid and, and was getting ran through. And she said, fight, you know, stand up, you know, and uh, he was like, oh, okay. You don't know what that means. Your man about to get RIP'd up in his joint, but hey, I thought that was that was good. And then for me, just that line where um she she's like, You you do not fight with honor. <laughs> he said, Well, he did. <laughs> like gangster. He did. Yeah. Uh well, one thing that uh, I know I like that by when Tyrion asked about um for a trial by combat, it's like he said, "Oh, my brother Jamie." I was like, confidence that he had in his brother, like he's the best swordsman in the, in the country at that, or one of the best swordsmen in that country at that point. It was like, yeah, I, I, I would have. He made the smart decision and asking for a trial by combat, and then asking for his brother Jamie. Yep. Uh, that was like smart decision. And then Bron, yeah, like you said, BY, that was a great line where he, where he just pointed out, like, "I didn't he fought by honor with honor." Uh, what happened to him? And it's kind of like a. Um, foreshadowing of where honor gets you at this point but you know gets you killed get yeah, you I, killed. sorry Sam. no go ahead tier oh. oh i was just gonna say i always love going to the veil just because <laughs> you never know what's gonna go on i think uh is her name lisa or something lisa. like that yeah she's just crazy and her son that she's babying at the ripe old age of too old is just like it's just so funny to me like she just like lost her husband and she lost her mind as well so it's just always like what is she gonna say to him but uh with uh braun as well 
I do like him just because like he's straight up a dirtbag and he's like I'm gonna be a dirtbag like this is what you're gonna get but also he's like he's good at what he does as well so that that's kind of like someone you want on your side if you're gonna be I mean I guess playing the game of thrones because he's just he's gonna be straight up about it and you know what you're getting with him I love I love what Tyrion said to him too he's like uh if somebody tries to offer you to kill me, uh, whatever they're paying you, I will pay more. He was like, I'll beat the yeah. price. And I'm like, this dude knows, bro. Like, he, under- <laughs> he understands the game. Tyrion understands said, I like, the game. I like living. <laughs> yeah, I like living. Um, and so, yeah, so the last couple things I talked touched on for episode six, we can move on to episode seven. Um, Ned finally realizes that Joffrey is not Robert's heir because of what Sansa said. Um, so Sansa and Joffrey have a warm embrace, a warm kiss, and she falls even further for Joffrey. And so she's like, I want to have Joffrey's golden-haired babies, right? And that's when Ned's like, golden-haired. And then he realizes, like, he's been reading about, like, everybody having black hair, and he goes to the book and sees, like, black hair, Baratheon, black hair, Baratheon, black hair, and then Lannister, or not Lannister, but Joffrey, golden hair and yeah. and the connection between the Lannisters. So he makes that realization. Um that was a that was a big point of the episode six. And the last thing I'll touch on is I know you were a big fan of Viserys in the in the very beginning, Brendan. But in episode six we see Viserys get his golden crown uh and he died. Well was, right, right. I so I wasn't really a, a fan of him. Okay. You know, like, cause I thought he was too much of a whiner. But this, yeah, that scene, I loved it. This is the scene I was talking about where you see how bratty he is. You know, he come in there like, I want what's mine. He, I promised him to you, and he was supposed to give me this army, and he didn't do that. And blah 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 blah. Like just bitchy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, like even to threaten, threaten the unborn child. So he got what he deserved. You know what I mean? You want to. This crown, and can we talk about <laughs> Drago, bro? Like, Drago was hard, like gangster. You know what I'm saying? And that scene, man. I, again, uh, his sister. You see that she knew then. Like, I think she knew before he got his crown that he wasn't no dragon king. You know, like she knew it was in her. Because, like you said in the scenes before. She realized that something's different about her. Like she's impervious to to heat and fire, and uh, so that that joint when Drago's like, oh, a golden crown for a king, take that joint. <laughs> like I was like, yo, and she was like, I'm watching it. She knew he was gonna die, but she's yeah. like, I'm watching. It. You know, you know who the actor is for Cal Drogo, right? Yeah, yeah, it's Aquaman. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I think this is like one of the first moments we get of like true justice. I just think he was so horrible. And you're just like, finally, like, at least me, when like his scenes would come on, I'd be like, somebody killed this man already because, like, what is he doing here? And so I feel like it was very just like, it was like kind of a relief when he died because it's like, okay, now I don't have to fear him anymore. And I think it was what was really funny, truly, to me is that after he threw this big tantrum at this like party that's going on he was like oh that's all i wanted exactly yeah yep. throw, a, throw a tantrum and then you get what you, you get what you want he's like oh okay i'm good now uh yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome well yeah so that that's episode six so it's kind of pushed the conversation we have a couple more episodes to cover and i won't keep you guys too long uh, but episode seven, uh, there's, there's a lot that happens in episode seven that we'll talk about, but I do want to touch on one. It's not really a key moment, but it's for me, I, I was waiting for as we finally get introduced to the patriarch of the Lannister family in Tywin Lannister. Cause like you hear about like all this money they have, you hear about like the great Tywin and all this other stuff. And I'm like, who the hell is Tywin Lannister? And we finally yeah. get to see his character show up. In episode seven, as we start getting into like the whole uh war situation. Um, but that that is uh that is uh you know it was interesting to see Tywin. I'm like, finally, that's who he is, and you know, because Tywin Tywin's very powerful. So um yeah. that for me, that was a key moment for episode seven was seeing finally introduced to, to Tywin. 
Yeah, I, I, I agree, man. Like, I was the, the same way the whole time. I was like, they keep talking about all this legacy and then, you know, you know, Tywin and who, I'm like, who is this guy? And then when you see him, you just his, I was like, at first, I didn't even realize it until he's like, you are Lannister, you're my son, or whatever. Um, Cause he's sitting there cutting his darn uh, elk or whatever. I'm like, who is this guy? Is he, he a servant to Jamie or whatever? I don't know what's going on. But then <laughs> as, as it's playing out, I'm like, oh. And yeah. then you just see his stature and just his wisdom. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. That general battle wisdom, all this different stuff Tywin has. Um, but the key moments from this this episode, I mean, big the big things, Ned confronts Cersei in the garden and says, hey, I know about your kids. Like you already, already talked about, get the F up out of here because uh, I'm going to tell my guy, Robert. Second thing, Robert actually dies, <laughs> which that's tragic. And it's so, oh my, it's, I'm I'm going I'm to bring up something that pissed me off uh, that, that he did. But uh, Robert, so Robert dies. He names um, Ned the basically king, protector of the realm, but basically king until Joffrey's old enough. That also happens. And then the third thing I want to talk about is um, is Ned trusting Baelish to to help him take over the the, the situation. But though, and then obviously it gets it gets it's a setup. They turn on Robert. Robert gets thrown in jail and framed as a, a traitor. But the, the biggest thing from all of those three I want to talk about is, for me personally, is the fact that this man had a whole piece of paper and thought that was going to protect him. Like, he gives the paper to uh, Sir Barristan. And he's like, Sir Barristan, you're honorable. Nobody's going to deny what you say. And then Cersei just walks up and tears it up. Right. And it's just like... It's like, bro, what you expect them to do? Like, what what did you expect was going to happen <laughs> here? Like, and I, I know he thought like it doesn't matter because I got Baelish, the guys in my back with the city watch, but still, I'm like, bro, that was the only proof that you have to say that Cersei is an effing liar, and you just lost it. That pissed right. me off. From I, out of those moments, that's the thing that pissed me off the most. But any thoughts on those three things? Neck in front of Cersei, uh, you know, Robert dying from the pig. Or uh, the situation with uh, Ned being set by Baelish. I feel like if they had an actual witness in the room, like while he was writing it, instead of it just being them two, then that could have been a little harder to rip up the piece of paper because it's like, oh, well, I saw the king write this and give it to Stark. You, you're murdered if if you do say that. You doesn't matter. You're still going to die. Like you RP that person who said they saw it. Yeah. To me, to me, this is where I would. The only thing that I would have done differently here is that I were to work with Cersei. And told her like, "Hey, your kids are gonna be safe." You know, I don't, I don't know what I would say, but this is where I would, whenever I'm talking to Cersei, I would, you know, like, figure out a way to where she's good, and you know, like, we're both good, so I don't die. But you know, I don't he's know. Not playing, he's not playing the game though, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. He's not playing the game. Yeah. Or he thought that wasn't the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, man. Uh, I so the whole confronting her. I mean, I think that was the thing that he had to do just with his honor, right? And his loyalty to his boy, right? Um, But then you also think about it. I mean, in my opinion, I think there was ambition to, you know, take over the throne on some part with Ned, like even maybe a little. That's just my opinion. That's what I thought was going to happen as a first time watcher. I thought he was going to, you know, rise to to take over the throne. Um, So, but if nothing else, he has to be, be loyal to the king, which is his homie. So I think him talking to Cersei and letting her know, hey, look, I know that, you know, Jamie is not your brother, he's your lover, or he's not just your brother, he's your brother and your lover. You know, and you got these kids that don't have any right to the throne. Like, so best thing for you to do is pack up, get out, because when, you know, Rob comes back, I'm letting her know what's going down. Now, she looks shook. I don't know if it was just me, but she looked shook when, you know, Ned was in there and then Rob said, all right, all y'all get out. Give us the room. She looked like, she like, my love, no, let me stay. You know, because <laughs> she, yeah. she thought Ned was going to drop them beans. You know what I mean? Right then and there, which I don't know. He should have maybe, I don't know. But uh, it wouldn't change anything. Robert was dying. Like, 
Mm-hmm. Let, yeah. let him die thinking that his golden haired son is his son. Yeah, I guess. Or, you know, he could have told him, sent to Raven or whatever while he was there, like as soon as he found out. And then yeah. did it before he even confronted her and be like, I already told him he's on the way. Leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that too. Here's, here's what I'll say. Sorry, let me cut you off, Brendan. Here's, here's what I'll say that his biggest mistake Renly came to him and said, You need to kill Cersei. And he mm-hmm. didn't. And I was like, bro, that's such a mistake. I was like, I was looking back on it. I was like, that's such a mistake. Renly had the answer. And he knew. But he just he just didn't take anyway, because he was such he was such a Stannis. He's like, Stannis Brathian used to be the king. I'm not trusting Renly, you know? And it's like, yes, true. Like Stannis has the the claim, but uh, Renly had the plan that made the most sense. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He did tell it. He did tell him that, and yeah, he didn't listen. But um, so now here's the thing: we talked about. I I got a question because I think E-Man, when we were uh, playing Risk the other night, you said something about, or maybe it's you, Savon, saying that it wasn't the boar that killed Rob, and y'all was like alluding to like you know this setup. And I was rewatching it this morning. I was like, okay, I'm, let me see if I can pick this up. So when um, um, the eunuch, what's his name again? Very Yeah. Barry. When he said to uh, Ned in the cellar, like, it was your mercy, you know, that uh, that uh, got him killed, right? Um, so was it the fact that he... He told, he found out that, you know, Godfrey wasn't um, Roberts and he let Cersei know, like, I know. And then she, did she tell the squire to poison that wine? Like, what's, what was the big conspiracy? I didn't, I'm not sure. Like, just he didn't watching. die by a boy. Just keep, just keep watching, bro. You gotta keep watching, bro. Just keep but, watching. They but they well, said what it. But they What'd they say? They said that they poisoned him. Who who I think it was Ned that said who gave or who gave the like wine? That. Who's giving who the gave, wine? Who gave the wine? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he has. That's what I'm saying. So well, it was the, okay. It was the okay. Squad. Maybe they didn't say it exclusively, but yeah. they did say that um, before he went to go kill the the knight that was saying what happened. He yeah. was like, yeah, before he went to kill him, he was drinking a lot and he had a lot in it. Like he was just unfocused, not like he usually was when he was drinking. Which I guess that means the more poison part. And then that's when the board got him. Yeah. I see I caught that this morning, so that's why I'm yeah, asking. So was... they do no, they 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 reveal I'm not gonna tell I'm not gonna tell it, but they reveal there's a there's a episode where they're talking about Robert in later seasons that they talk about specifically how he died. After season two. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Still, we'll, stay. we'll stay there. We'll stay there. But it um, has something to do yeah. with what he was drinking, the wine he was drinking, and made him less less um, aware and aggressive as assertive as he would have been hunting. Correct. Um, so what was I gonna say? So yeah, just just for time purposes, we'll we'll get to the next few episodes pretty quickly. But um, so yeah, that's episode seven. A lot of stuff goes down in episode seven with uh with um with uh, Ned. Episode eight, we see a couple different things. Ned's in prison. Ledway is a traitor. Sansa and Arya are being seized as well. Sansa is not able to escape, but Arya is able to make her escape. And so we see her start to be separated from her family and start to go. She's going to start her own journey. Um, Rob, my my boy Rob, says, I'm picking up this damn mantle and I'm going to get my dad. That, that for me solidify Rob as a real one and why to this day he's still my favorite character of Game of Thrones is because he said my dad's in trouble I'm picking up the mantle I'm gonna go ride for my dad we're gonna go fight the Lannisters I was like this dude is a real one and I'm like I love the scene where he's like I think I'm some nervous my hand's shaking and his best friend Theon's like you should be good you know, it's like it's like I'm like, bro. Yeah. He's like, he doesn't care like, what the consequences are. He's like, I'm gonna go do it because it makes sense. Yeah, and because he's like, you, you're 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 nervous. That means you're not stupid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I I feel you right there, Savon. Like the fact that he was like, uh, 
that Godfrey wants you to come and, you know, pretty much kiss his ass. And he's like, oh, I'll, I'll come. But <laughs> no, because the guy was like, you can't refuse. He's like, oh, I'm not going to refuse. I'm going to go, but not alone. <laughs> like, I'm coming, I'm bringing my army. Get get the crew together. They said they would fight for my dad. They said they want to stand up and defend his honor. They would if they ever had to. Let's round up the troops right now. We're going. My, my bannerman. Bring my bannerman. Yeah. Yep. Um, for sure, bro. And that's go ahead here. Oh, sorry. I was about to say what I like about Rob is that it wasn't just like handed to him. Like, yeah, he was in trouble, so he like kind of had to step up, but it wasn't just like a okay, we'll readily follow you. It was like he had to like kind of struggle to it, like, okay, like like am I really being the honorable man that my father's doing? Like, am I really being the war man that these people need? Like, am I really being the leader that I'm supposed to be? Like he's kind of struggling with this identity thing. And then on top of that. He's like, he's worried about his sisters, worried about his mom, worried about his brothers at home, worried about Jon Snow on the wall. Just like, he's got a lot going on and a lot on his shoulders. And it's it's like a pressure cooker that's making him rise. And it's not just a, oh, you got a title. You're, you're a leader now. Yep. No, I agree. That boy Rob is a, Rob is a real one. And that's, that's all I got to say. Brandon knows what happens to Rob, unfortunately. Um, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know how. I just know he. Oh, I know bro. he comes to a demise, bro. Oh my god! I don't know how. Bro. Anyways, we'll so get there. We'll get, hey, we'll, we'll yeah. get there. We'll get there. Yeah, if you start watching, just 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 name anyway. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what season happens. I'm just gonna say you'll you'll know, and I just want I just want you to talk to me afterwards. <laughs> Call me sorry. after. Like you're gonna because you're gonna want to knowing you, you're gonna have a reaction. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. call me afterwards. I, I already know. I I I will already know what you watched. I'm not gonna tell you what season it's in, but yeah. you'll eventually get there. And I'm gonna already know. Just call me and be like, bro. I'm gonna be like, yep, you saw it. You saw it. Yeah. Um. So that that happens. But um. So yeah. So Rob Rice for Winterfell. The war between the uh, Starks and Lannisters happens. Sansa pleads her case for her dad, and you think Joffrey's gonna honor that, but we find out in episode nine. That he doesn't he doesn't honor it. That he's an evil little piece of shit, um, and he ends up killing the head of the Stark family. Ned is beheaded. Even after Ned says that Joffrey's king, he claims himself as a traitor after doing what you know he was ordered to do to keep stay alive and just go to the wall. Uh, he is he is killed. Right? Were you guys first time watching it? Were you guys shocked seeing yes. Ned die? Hell yes. Oh, my baby here. Yes, bro. <laughs> I was so shocked. I was like, what the hell? I couldn't, I couldn't, man. I was like, what? First of all, I, I didn't like the fact that they, that was season nine and not the season finale. I mean, episode nine, not the season finale. Um, But yeah, I mean, bro, I was so hurt. I was so hurt. Like, because I really thought, I was expecting in season two, I was going to see, you know, Ned start on the throne ruling shit. That's like that's what I expected. So I was I was so shocked and I was so I was hurt. A piece of me died too. <laughs> Bro. Well, when when I saw that, I was like, okay, the North's gonna get a, someone good that can actually fight again. You know, yeah. Jordan Jones. And then you know, you look. They, I like that they go to Jon Snow's perspective and they put him in a hard spot because he's like, you know, I I gotta go save my dad. I gotta go fight a war with my brother. But he's like, no, you, you joined the wall. And I was like, dang, man, that's a tough spot to be in. You know, yeah. do your your Limit to the wall, or do you go help out your family down there? Yeah, uh, it was a great scene. Yep, yeah. John, John had he had some good decisions to make. Um, but you know that whole scene where they were about to kill Ned. You know, what I mean, like <laughs> it was crazy. I, I liked how they did it. Um, because you know you got Arya, she's on that little statue or whatever. She sees what's going on. But here's what: what did what did Ned say to the um? the guy that uh covers um Arya from seeing him get killed what did he say to him as he was being transported out onto the uh, the landing did y'all hear it y'all remember I forgot because I was when I watched it this morning I was like okay that's why the guy you know grabbed Arya and like you know don't look and all that but I maybe it's revealed later seasons seasons. I don't remember or not though yeah okay but uh, yeah. I just think that whole scene, like, it was crazy because, you know, you think you you think that Joffrey, I don't know how we would, but we think he's going to do the honorable thing because they set it up that way. And and then he, he turns and, like, Ned is shocked. Uh, 
Sansa is shocked and hurt. Nate with is shocked. With his head's and so is Cersei. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but was Cersei really is was she? Yeah, like, I feel like she was, was because you think this that was, was genuine? The, yeah, but this was the agreement. Like if he says all this, then he'll be good. Like I'm sure she still had some plans for Ned, but it, I don't think it was to kill him right there. That's when she lost control of Joffrey, is what I'm seeing. Like watching it again, and when she's shocked, she's like, "Oh, you! I didn't tell you to do that. Why are you moving on your own accord?" So the, I think that's what shocked her. Yeah, she she turned around and tried to say something, but it, it, the the screen uh, the camera yeah, turned. Yeah, something. Mm-hmm. yeah no, I, I know she, she was just like, "No," you know what I'm saying? I saw the I saw the moment of shock, but I was like, mm, "Is this genuine? Is this real? Is this just like oh acting out? You know, trying to act like you." You, you didn't have anything to do with this. Um, but yeah, man, the, just the moment where, you know, when they realize it, he's like, all right, I'm going to take this because, like, Arya gets off the statue trying to go up there to save her daddy with Beetle. <laughs> she, she, Arya was ready. She's going to go save her daddy. Um, and then once he saw that she wasn't going to see him get beheaded, he was just like, I was like, oh my gosh, bro. You know, as a father, you know, I'm like, okay, just don't do this in front of my baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like, I mean, the older one, she right there, you know, she ain't ain't nothing that can be done about it, but don't do it in front of my baby. You know what I mean? And, but then once he saw, like, okay, it was kind of like, and it's crazy, because I also thought I was like, yeah, if they're doing a story about Jesus, they start to play white Jesus. Um <laughs> and I'm like, but that moment is like it was kind of like when Christ gave it gave up, you know. And he's like, it's finished. And Ned was just like, okay, she ain't gonna see it. And he just dropped his head and let it be. And I was like, oh my god, I didn't cry though. That's funny. You know, you know what the interesting perspective of it is if you think about it. I don't know if this was the writers. Like I haven't like looked into this, but the first death we see in Game of Thrones is Ned beheading the deserter. And then mm-hmm. we move on to the end of the season and Ned is being beheaded himself. So it's kind of like a interesting like twist yeah. of irony there. So I'm pretty sure the writers probably did that on purpose. Um but well, there is, say that again? There is every, everyone that every I guess every main character that dies dies by the weapon that they killed somebody else with. Mm. But no no explain that no I think you we'll see that later on when it plays yeah. out. Yep, so that, that happens there. Um, we see uh, Rob start win his first battle. Uh, he, he convinces uh, the army that he's going one way, go somewhere else. They end up capturing Jamie Lannister as yes. well. Uh, hold on, let me let me get through the rest of the season, and then we can touch on any points without with with this. Um, so that's episode nine. Is Jamie gets captured? Episode ten. This is where we see uh, episode nine and ten. We see Cal Drogo end up dying from the from a small cut, which is so funny. He dies from the smallest cut because he because he because he, he pressed into it too. That's what kills him, not the cut itself, but he pressed into it, which made it open up that a little bit more. Yes, it is. It's from festering, from it not being. What do you think kills him? The witch? You think the witch killed him? Yeah, the witch killed him. No, yeah. He got, was he tried and to, he in turn, Daenerys killed him. Yeah, no, but the he his he gets the cut, and then the witch is supposed to like heal him. Yeah, but she wasn't gonna heal him because she's a captured witch. That's not their witch. So she didn't like do anything to help him. But if he no. had a cut in the first place, he'd still be alive. Well, oh, but he would have been fine with just a cut. You think the Dothraki rose to power off of? I, I agree with cuts? I agree with Tara. Like that's what I was thinking the whole time too. I was like, you know, this witch is the reason he he died. Because like you no, know, it's the Aries. Huh. I said Daenerys is the problem now that I'm watching. She's the problem. Yeah. She she has too much. She doesn't know how the war thing goes on. And she yeah. is trying to save these women, but they tell you later on, like, hey, they already raped me like four times. Like, you're not saving anything. Like, my yeah. like my life is defiled. They've been my village and everything. So she calls herself trying to save these people, not knowing how war works and not knowing how prisoners work. And then she th- takes this stranger that does magic. And tries to heal a wound for the call, the head of the Dothraki. And then 
why do you think she's gonna actually help him and put real medicine and do light spirituals mm. if they're like when they were actually saving or trying to save him she's like this is blood magic like this is forbidden and so that thus comes the downfall from trusting this witch that you saved from yeah. all the worst stuff yeah that's that's crazy that's a, that's a good that's a good point because I, I just thought it was because the the cut festered and then just couldn't do it but that makes more sense that she not only just didn't heal that she didn't heal him in the first place she probably made it worse and then because of that like she killed her baby with, with everything it did with the blood magic too so that's interesting i, I noted that too i was gonna touch on that like she's tricked by the i, I said she was tricked because of because of the whole baby cal drogo situation but mm -hmm. we obviously see cal drogo um die because then he kills him because the what's left of cal drogo is like just a vegetable, vegetable. essentially um mm -hmm. And then Jamie finally admits that he pushed Brown out the window. Um, Tyron, Tywin tells Tyrion that he's going to be handed the king. And then the last thing it sees, the season ends with is Danny walking into the fire, uh, not burning, and then coming out with three baby dragons. Dragons. Right. So that's that's what happens in episodes eight through ten. I know we touched on a little bit, but anything, any comments, last comments for wrap up uh, on the the end of the season going into season two i guess my last comments is denarius is the problem but i do love the dragons and that's all i do so i i i agree that denarius was was a problem for kyle drago um i like to think of man the woman was his downfall like she she softened him up because you know it, I mean, he's the he's the warrior. That's why when the dude, you know, hit him the first time with the Doran sword, he pressed into it like, "You ain't doing nothing to me, bro. What's what's wrong with you?" And then when the, he killed him, took out his tongue and throat, and like sat down, all good, and, like he ain't tripping. And then, you know, she wants him to get healed or whatever, and his maven is like, "Nah, not by this witch." Like even this, he's like, "No, nah, this is a witch. Nah, we don't do that." And then. He's she's begging him. Danny's like, my love, my what's he calling? My my so, uh, moon and star, sun, sun and moon, my sun and moon, and and uh, I need you to get that taken care of. You're hurt. I don't want to see you hurt. And he's like, looking in her eyes and I'm like, okay, you know, it's the it's the woman that causes the downfalls. It's like you know, Samson and Delilah. <laughs> Samson let Delilah cut his hair. He lost all his strength. That's true. You know what I mean? But I will say, now about this whole thing with, I didn't like this as the finale, simply because it's like, it wasn't as strong to me. I, I would have ended the season with Ned getting beheaded. You know what I mean? Because that just, uh, that was a very climactic moment. But what I did like about the fact that, um, you know, that they ch did show that she went into this fire and what's the, what was the, her, um, her watchman's name? I can't remember the, the guy who was protecting Dora. her. Huh? Oh, Dora. Mormon. Dora. Dora. Dora Mormon. Huh? Yeah. Dora. Yeah, him. You know, because he was like, I don't want to watch you walk, walk through this fire and, you know, like, I'm not going to sit by and watch you pretty much commit suicide is what he was thinking, right? But she knew, like, I'm touched. <laughs> you just don't know. Um, so I like the fact that they they showed us that, and then we see her come with these dragons who have hatched now from these eggs that we thought everybody thought was just dormant. And for me, that's like, okay, she's the dragon queen. We all we know that now. Like she's the one with the dragon. She's a true dragon. She's going to be the one that rises in power. That's what I'm saying. And this other stuff in season two that makes me believe that like she is about to rise in power she's about to take back the, the throne she's about to take the throne yeah my throne but that's what i'm seeing so <laughs> i love that aspect of it but i wouldn't have ended the season right there yeah I'll, I'll say two things off what you said brendan one this won't be the last time you're angry with the writing so i'll just put that one out there um, <laughs> two two um i my my thought too i had this thought because i finished episode 10 actually this morning um and do you think the witch dying had anything to do with the dragons being reborn 
You know what I mean? Like that was that was my thought. Like, cause she was like she was like doing some incantation, and like even Daenerys said it too. She was like, "I don't need your screams. I just need your life." Right. So I, I'm like, I'm like wondering. I'm like, I'm like, what? Did oh the wow! Like, the dragon's coming back. I don't know. It's just it's just a thought that I had. Um, That's an interesting thought. I, yeah. And she did say that. I don't need to scream. You, she, in fact, she was just real gangster. She was like, you will, but I don't need your screams. Yeah. I just need your life. Need but, your life. You, but you're going to scream anyway. So that was, that was wow, a thought that that good point. But also, also it was like, it was like two things too. Like Cal Drogo died, the witch died, and then Daenerys died and reborn, I would think. And that, that is what the dragons came back as. Like, I, I had like a lot of like, like one, I wonder if this is like where, I'm going to do some research and see, but that's also a thought. Because there's three dragons, three lives went to the fire. And where the one was reborn, but then all three dragons came back too. So that's that was my only thought from the end of season that's ten. Crazy. Yeah, but Eman, any last last comments, last thoughts? Yeah, I'll, uh, for me, since you guys already touched on the Cal Drogue and Daenerys thing, um, to me, the one of the most exciting moments was when Tywin tells Tyrion, "You're gonna be handed the king," and he basically tells him to get the king under control and get Cersei under control. And I was like, "Yes, they need someone." To get them under the control, and I don't know if Tyrion was the right guy, but I know he's smart enough to be able to do it. So I was excited to see what he does as hand of the king. Well, he definitely slaps uh, um, <laughs> the king around. Was yeah, he he he, he, he punts his nephew <laughs> so. all the time. But it uh, nah, for you, all the time. I will say I will say that that's not the best thing for Tyrion because it does come back to buy him an ass. <laughs> so. Uh, so so that's that's all I'll say. I I didn't really think for you. I didn't really think for. You. All I'm I'm saying is Jeff Joffrey, holy grudges. That's all I gotta say. So oh, that doesn't yeah. ruin anything for you. Obviously, you already know he's an evil person, but uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, anyways, yeah. well, I appreciate you guys again. We went a little long, which I I kind of expected because uh, this is a good show. Uh, hopefully, next the next time we do this, it's not as long. But but when we wrap up, I always like to have any viewers that did watch this far leave a uh emoji in the comments i know brendan's actually left one before uh what emoji should everybody that's watched this far leave in the comments everybody who's watched game of thrones this far or no no our podcast? episode our, our podcast that's a good question that's a little emoji with the eyes going everywhere with the tongue out that's like it because <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> Let's go with that yeah. one. Okay. So I the, say the mind, the mind blown joint. The, the mind blown. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's funny. Okay, we'll do we'll do the crazy eyes. We'll, we can switch it up for each season. We'll do this season. We'll do the, the crazy eyes, the tongue out. If you guys have watched this far, uh, let us know by in the comments dropping the emoji, crazy eyes emoji with the tongue out. Uh, but we appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Coffee with Friends. Peace out. See you guys.